this is something again that I'm hoping resonates with both health practitioners and researchers. I hope that if you have something to say, you will use the model to figure out the best way to say it. So you can take your communication, your very simple communication and say, can I make this more effective by using the model, for example, by uh, thinking about whether I should put more emotion into it or whether you know I should think about making it more imageable or more memorable or whether I should tell a story versus you know this all these statistics that I have there. Um, those are just some examples and we'll talk about each of the model variables more specifically but I'm hoping that you look at the communication and say hmm I don't know my gut sort of tells me maybe there's a way to make this more user-friendly, to make this more memorable, to make this um, a behavior change model rather than just, okay, I'm being educated. And um, improve your communication via the model. So that's one way. There's a couple of other ways. You could have two or three communications that the group is you know, having a debate about, can't decide, do I want A or B? People are saying, I like this part, I like that part. So what the model can do is help resolve some of that conflict. It can tell you, hey, you know what, maybe what you need to do is use the model and out of the three, it'll tell you, just like we did with the verb campaign, this is the best, this is the second best, and this one is not as effective. So you can pick the communication that is most effective and resolve differences in an objective, impersonal manner. You know, it's not one of those, you know, you win, I win, or I like this, a matter of taste. It's just done objectively. Speaking of which, I do want to mention that as the model developer, I too did not have any vested interest in any variable. You know, I, even though I have done different studies and published different uh, research on level of fear or different other message format variables such as framing or um, uh, things like uh, different types of emotions, I didn't have a vested interest in those being included in the model. We just let the model do its thing. We let the statistics tell us the story. And I think that often happens. I mean, I can relate to people around the room saying, I want my variable in the model because I've spent a lifetime working on this variable. And you might find people who are saying, I would like level of fear in the model, or I really want to make sure that we have something on, um, you know, response efficacy or how effective something is, you know, how effective the detection tool is or how effective the prevention uh, recommendations are. And we want to get away from that and say, look, this is an impersonal objective model. And sometimes it's a great way to resolve that conflict if, you know, you're having a group um, meeting about which message is best. So it can, the model can help you pick the best message. And the third way is, of course, the tailoring part, which is saying, you know what, we don't really have enough money for this to go to everybody. I mean, if someone wants to do, take advantage of the communication and follow the recommendation, fantastic. But we don't have the money to actually make sure it gets disseminated to everyone. So if we have constraints and we have a fixed budget and we have to decide which of the audience, is the sets that we have, which one is most likely to respond to these set of recommendations that we have in the message, the model can actually help you select that particular segment. So you can say, oh, you know what? I have three segments. I have young people who are white. I have older people who are white. And then I have young and older people who are non-Caucasian or non-white. And I'm not sure which message should go where, or if I have only one message, where I, where I should target this message. And the model can help you do that. It can tell you how effective, it can give you a score for each of those four groups. If you have one communication, it can tell you this group will respond the best and this group will respond the least and these two groups will be in the middle. So it can also help you make some tough decisions about how to use your constraints or your budget most effectively so that you do have the best health outcome.